This is gonna sting, but I think you need to hear it. Hey guys, I'm Michelle. Welcome back to my channel. If writing workshops and traditional publishing chat are your thing, please consider subscribing. So today we're gonna talk about that thing that happens when you're drafting your book and you suddenly realize you're really obsessed with one or two or seven of your side characters and you kind of start liking them and wanting to spend more time with them than you do your protagonist. Here's how I typically see this play out with my writing workshop students. The story starts in one POV. The catalyst happens and the protagonist moves into act two, entering a new world, whether literally or metaphorically or emotionally or whatever. They meet the B story characters and they're trucking along and then suddenly we get a scene from one of those B story characters points of view. It's almost always entirely backstory. Here's the fascinating tale of this fellow's life up until this point. Then we go back to the protagonist's point of view and we're going through some more scenes and then, oh, here's another scene from a different side character's point of view. We go back to the protagonist's point of view, action happens, and then, oh, here we are in another different side character's point of view. This time it's a scene where the protagonist isn't even present and the side character is just doing something really funny or really cool showing off in some way. It doesn't move the plot forward very much at all, but it's really entertaining. All right, back to the protagonist, back to the main plot. We go along for a few more scenes and then here's yet another scene where this time we're head hopping back and forth between two side characters. They're having this really intense, amazing conversation with fantastic dialogue and it has nothing to do with the protagonist. Every scene in your story needs to serve your story, right? We can't go off on tangents in our novels because readers aren't usually going to want to follow. So you might think that I tell my students to either scrap those scenes entirely or rewrite them if they can find a way to make it relevant to the plot and to do it from the protagonist's POV. But I don't. Why? Because more often than not, those scenes from the side character's POV are some of the student's best writing. Because they're fascinated by these new characters or this new idea or whatever it is that kind of sparked that scene. And because the fact that they loved it so much that they were so into it and they just had to write it, that really makes the writing shine. That feeling is writer goals, right? And those scenes are story gold, so why would I tell them to cut that stuff? Here's what's really going on. When most writers get an idea for a book, it usually falls into one of three categories. A character with a specific need or issue, a premise or a specific type of conflict, or a what if question. I'll use a few of my own novels as an example to illustrate each of these. In Olive and the Backstage Ghost, my idea was Hey, here's this girl who really loves to sing, but she can't find her voice because of her unbearably controlling stage mom. In The Cats and Claire Files, my idea was, hey, what if a kid who really loved horror movies but did not believe in ghosts ended up joining a Ghost Hunters TV show? And in Spell and Spindle, my idea was, hey, what if marionettes could steal children's souls and become real? So to simplify this, I had a character idea, a plot idea, and a world idea. More often than not, when I see writers run into this side character issue, they did not have a character idea. They had a plot idea or a world idea. And just to be really clear, not one of those three types of ideas are better than the other. Ideas for novels come to us in all different kinds of ways. And no matter what kind of idea you have, you can and should eventually develop your character and your plot and your world. I'm just talking about your entry point into the story. And that brings me to the root of this problem. Why do you want to spend more time in your side character's POV than your protagonist's POV. This is gonna sting, but I think you need to hear it. It's because your protagonist is a Mary Sue. Before you come for me in the comments, listen, I don't mean your protagonist is this flawless, annoyingly perfect, everybody is falling in love with her character, no. When I say Mary Sue, what I mean is this character is a self-insertion. And again, no, I know your protagonist is probably nothing like you. Maybe a better way to put it would be this protagonist is a vehicle through which you are exploring your idea. If you had a premise or plot idea, you're attempting to steer your protagonist down that road. If you had a what if or a world idea, you're just driving her around and trying to scope the place out. 
I have done this before many times and the folder full of unfinished manuscripts on my desktop is proof. And look, I'm sure you, like me, did your due diligence. You gave your protagonist a want and a need and a few good flaws, made her as real and developed as a character as you could, but let's face it, she was never the spark of this story. Now, that side character over there, the one with the backstory you just felt this compulsion to write, or the one who you just envisioned them doing this random cool thing and you had to write that scene even though it didn't fit your plot in any way, or the one whose voice is just coming to you way, way, way more strongly than your protagonists ever did, that's something you need to pay attention to. You had the premise idea or the world idea, you explored it and you found this character. Maybe they need to be the main character. Now, I do want to clarify one thing. Multi-POV books exist and they are great. And there is absolutely no rule saying that you must write your story from one POV. But every POV in a multi-POV novel must have an arc and a reason for existing. So, so often when I see students jump into writing like a seven POV novel, there is very clearly one main character. And the reason they're writing in all those other POVs is because they just haven't developed the skills yet to tell the story solely through one POV. The protagonist meets a B story character and the B story character has a backstory that the reader needs to know. It's relevant information to the story, but instead of weaving it in through dialogue, showing it through character traits and actions, through details, through hints, and perhaps the hardest thing of all, trusting your reader to read between the lines and infer what they need to know, the writer just head hops on over, pitches a tent in that guy's head and lets him ramble away for a few pages. That is not necessarily an indication that the writer has found their main character and this guy needs to be the star of the show. It just means they need to practice weaving that type of information into the story more naturally. But if you find yourself plodding through your protagonist scenes or rushing through them because you can't wait to get to that side character in that next scene because that's the thing that's making you feel excited about this story. If that's where you're finding your joy in this book, that tells me something different. To me, it suggests that after all that driving around and exploring, you have finally found the heart of the story that you want to tell. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would appreciate it if you hit that like button and maybe share it with another writer who could find it useful too. I'll see you later this week with another video and until then, keep writing. Okay, Rosa.